Hello, welcome to Cactus in the Garage. How are you doing today? Boy, this project sure has taken a bit of a hiatus, huh? Yeah, sorry about that. So let me give you a bit of a quick walkthrough of what's been happening ever since. I had my fair share of trouble with getting into the car. Whoops. And I ended up having to smash a window to finally get in. Opening the doors from the inside didn't work either, so I had to try and reach for the hood latch. The car sat outside for about two months before I got my ass into gear. Well, during those two short months it sat outside, it became heavily mold infested. This is how it looked like when I finally got it inside. And this is the result of the many hours of work. There, what do you think? She cleaned up real nice, didn't she? And at least now I won't catch 69 diseases from just looking at this interior. But I am eager to get started, so let's forget about this interior at the moment. And I believe the plan of action is going to be tearing all of the mechanical bits out, the front and rear end, then get on with the interior. And lastly, cut the firewall and strut towers and floor out and toss this away. Sounds good? Yeah, I think so. Let's get on with it. We start by raising the car onto jack stand. Then we unbolt the wheels. and kick them to show who's boss, because, you know, road salt. It didn't take long for the grinder to come out, but remember the PPE folks. Now, before we can get to the fun mechanical bits, we have some obstacles in the way, like front end, radiator, accessories, and whatnot. But wait, something is missing. Ah, I know. Maestro, music!
I'm not sure if this inky cooler is supposed to be this crooked. Someone must have rallied this thing or something. But I approve. As you can see, I'm in the process of labeling all the connectors. It's a good practice to do, that way you won't have as many head scratching moments later on. Now that everything is removed and the wiring harness is disconnected and moved out of the way, we can unbolt the struts and subframe. Oh, and I did unbolt the drive shaft from the gearbox, as well as the exhaust. The benefit of removing the engine and subframe as one unit, as I am here, is that you don't have to drain the power steering fluid, because that always manages to drip and leak on your floor for months after disassembly. Almost like it needs to offer its blood to the car gods periodically or something. Finally, it's time for the rear, but first we have a pesky exhaust system in the way. Oh look! Here we can see the rare metallum exhaust on a snake slithering out from its tail. And here we have the snake catcher showing his dominance by casually strolling up to grab it, dragging it away as his prize.
the heat shields out of the way, the drive shaft is next in line to be removed. Now to compress the spring before unbolting the shock absorbers, otherwise you will have a really bad time when it shoots off. I saw that both rear springs had sheared off, so I thought it was a good idea to remove them with brute force. Nope, won't do that on the other side. Ouch. Oh, and never cut springs which are under tension. Serious injury may occur. After removing the Haldex connector, as well as lopping off the brake hoses and handbrake cables, we can unbolt the subframe. By the way, I would never make sparks fly at or near a gasoline tank. That's just asking for trouble, you know. I decided to thread this bolt back in as safety, until I really want it to come down. That bolt really didn't want to let go. But I brought out the negotiator. And you know, we negotiated a bit. And I won on both sides. Removing the safety bolt we threaded back in earlier. In no way did I forget to unbolt the trailing arms, and I absolutely did not try to lower the rear axle with those still attached. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <coughs>
it was kind of unnecessary for me to cut the brake hose because we have a bracket for the uh, brake line just after so I still have had to snip this if this tired old snippers can do the job no Down she goes. The right hand shock absorber wouldn't tilt up far enough, so out it goes. And now, time for the interior. But, I feel a montage coming on. Time Warp. Engage. All right, and this is how the donor car is looking right now. Still have the carpet to remove and the heater box, but everything else is out. Oh, and I really like the bracket for the uh, armrest. Really sturdy and simple design. So that's obviously going to move into the caddy. But yeah, I'm going to delay this a bit. Originally, I was going to pull it, but the screws for it is behind. Of this heat shield and frankly, I want to clean this engine bay before doing anything else because it's mold on the uh, wiring loom and everything else. So you could possibly say that if I would have pulled the engine and gearbox out separately and left the subframe with uh, suspension components and everything, I could have just pushed it out and washed it off. But shut up. I didn't think about it, okay? So the plan of action is I'm going to Grab some wheel dollies that I have back at my house. Weld some form of uh, quick brackets under the car so I can push it out and clean it. So yeah, here's where we are with that. And obviously I'm going to delay removing the wiring loom from here because it's connected to the one outside, obviously. And also delay this, including the mat. But I will strip this off off camera when I've cleaned it so you don't have to watch the more of this boring stuff because 
Honestly, I am fully aware that this might not be the most fun thing to watch since you want to see that one. And here we have the drive line in all its glory. Obviously, it's looking kind of sad, so a major refurbishment is in order. That one is obviously not going to be used because we're going to use my older TDI ALH engine, which is already tuned if you haven't watched my previous clips of this project car. And honestly, looking at this rear end, I'm not really liking the setup of it. So yeah, I might do something different here. You just have to wait and see for that upcoming video if I do or not. But yeah, not liking this. Also, don't really like the heft of it. Just, just look at it. You can see that it's really, really heavy. Oh, and uh, I also removed the tank. I was already suspecting that this wouldn't be able to be used in the caddy, but I wanted to remove it and, you know, glean on the girth of it a bit. And she's a thick tank. So yeah, that's not going to be used. Let's see if I'm going to use a custom one that I'm going to weld myself or I don't know. If you have any ideas of a tank that's supposedly around 60 to 70 liters and would fit well under a caddy, especially with a drive shaft going through it, let me know. Now I know that watching me strip this golf down might not be the most fun thing to watch. And to be honest, if you have watched this far, know that I truly, truly appreciate you because that sweet watch time is going to help my mostly dead channel to grow. And the reason I haven't really been uploading about this project or even progressing on it that much is because I have been battling mental health issues, which were quite severe. And me stating in a few episodes ago that I would start posting every week kind of threw a curveball at myself by doing that because that set my mental health issues in overdrive. That's still my goal, but let's see it as a long-term goal. So if you have been patiently waiting for me to continue to upload on this caddy, know that I am better now and I am going to completely devote my free time to this as I love doing. This is not considered work for me. This is actually aiding in my mental health issue. So yeah, if you watched this far, despite it being kind of a boring episode, thank you so much. This episode has been more for me to just kick it in gear again and just get back on the track. So yeah, know that I'm still going to keep working on it. I'm still going to upload. Let's just take it as it comes and I will increase the upload schedule whenever I can. But the end game goal is still one episode per week or possibly one every second week. Anyway, I just wanted to explain the situation, where I've been, why I haven't uploaded, because I felt like I owe you guys. So yeah, let's see you in the next episode and uh, hopefully it will just be in a few weeks. I'm going to be here every possible day I can to just keep working and maybe, just maybe, we can have this caddy done by the mid-summer. So yeah, see ya fellas.